Hello and welcome back. On our Linux servers, we have all kinds of things that we want them to be able to do. We want them to do our bidding, to carry out tasks. They all have a purpose for their existence. And sometimes we want to actually run things in the future or at a designated time. And in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at how to edit the cron tab, which allows us to do exactly that. We can set up a job or a task to run in the future so we could schedule something ahead of time, which actually is awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's see some examples of using the cron tab, scheduling jobs and associated commands. Let's get started. Now, first of all, we need to understand what a cron tab actually is. We check the Etsy cron tab file. You can see quite a bit of information here. And the way that this file works is that on each line, basically each line that's not commented out, these hash symbols right here are comments, each of the lines that are not commented will be its own cron job. So we can see a cron job right here, and this one's wrapped a bit, but we can see one right here, right here, and also right here as well. And the way it breaks down is that we have several sections of the cron tab and each section is responsible for a specific aspect of scheduling a job. So obviously when we want to schedule a job, we want to schedule it for a very specific time. Now here at the top, we can actually see a breakdown of how the time works out. So right here, we have the minute, which shows right here. In the next field, which is going to be this one, we have the hour. Then we have the day of the month. After that, we have the month. Then the last part of this section here is the day of the week. Now notice how the minutes, days, and months break down. So obviously with minutes we have 0 to 59, no surprise there. And with hour, we have 0 to 23. And as you could probably guess, 0 is midnight and 23 is 11 p.m. We also have day of the month which can be the 1st through the 31st. Keep in mind that some months have fewer than 31 days. And then for the month, it could be 1 through 12. For the 12 calendar months, we can also use, as it shows here, the three character abbreviation for the month. Then we have day of the week. And the 0 through 6 here refers to Sunday through Saturday. So take a moment to familiarize yourself with the order that you see right here. That's very important. So the next column, we have the user right here. That's the username that the task will be run under when it does run. And then we have the command that will be executed after that. So when it comes to managing cron jobs, we have a dedicated command that allows us to work with a cron tab system, which is the cron tab command as you see here. If we issue cron tab L, we see all of the cron jobs for the user that we're logged in with. So considering my user doesn't even have a cron job, let's see what it looks like to actually create one. And to do that, we can use cron tab and then dash E, just like that. And since this is the very first time that I've ever run this command on this server as this user, it's asking me which editor I'd like to use to edit the cron tab with. But keep in mind, after you make a decision here, it's not going to ask you in the future. So just choose whatever text editor you like the best. So I'll press enter to accept the default of two. And now I have the cron tab open for my user. Now up here, it's showing that I'm actually working with a text file in the temp directory. So when you use cron tab dash E, you're actually editing a temporary file that'll become an actual cron tab when you save the file. So anyway, I'll scroll down a bit. And after all the comments, we can go ahead and add our very own cron job. So what I'm actually going to do is actually start a job at a specific time and I'm going to show you exactly how that breaks down. So first of all, we need to decide when we want the job to actually trigger. So in my case, what I'm going to do is choose 44 for the minute, then for the hour, 15, basically 3 p.m. And an asterisk in this file means anything. So in this case, every day of the month. Then for the month, Again, asterisk, day of the week, asterisk, and then the command. So for example, I'll just echo 
this is a test to slash home, and then my username, and then test file.txt. So I'll save the file. In the case of nano, it's control O and then enter and then control X to exit out. And the time right now is 342. So we should see that file generate pretty soon. I don't have it yet. So I'll give this cron job a moment to run. And if successful, it's going to run the command which will trigger the creation of a file in my home directory. So it's past the time that the cron job should have ran in. And there's the file. And sure enough, it says this is a test. So if we take a look at the cron tab for my user again, we can see the line at the very bottom here, and it did run. So I scheduled it to run at a minute of 44 and 15 for the hour, and then three fields in a row I had set to an asterisk, and then I had it run this command right here, which resulted in the generation of the test file as we expected, and it says this is a test. So we just saw an example of a user that we're currently logged in with. We use the crontab-l command to view the crontab for our user. And then we use the crontab-e command to edit the crontab for our user. But at some point, we'll want to issue commands as a different user, possibly root or some other user, because we don't want everything running as one user. And my local logged in user may not even have permission to do certain things on the system anyway. So we can actually work with the cron tab of other users as well. And to do that, we can use cron tab and then dash u, and the username that we want to configure the cron tab for, and then dash l, dash e, or whatever variation of the cron tab command we want to use. Now obviously, I'm going to need permission to edit the cron tab for that user. So in the case of root, for example, I'll need to use sudo to elevate my privileges so that I'll be able to actually edit the cron tab for that user or even simply to just view it. Now root doesn't actually have a cron tab as you can see here, but if it did, that command would have actually showed the cron tab for root. And similarly, we can also edit the cron tab for another user as well. So what I'm going to do is run sudo cron tab dash u, and there's a user named tux on my system. And then I'm going to use the dash E option to edit the cron tab for that user. So again, dash U, and then the username that you want to work with. And if you don't include the dash U in username, it's going to assume that you want to work with your currently logged in user. And then in action, in this case, we want to edit that. So I'll press enter. And this is the first time that we are editing the cron tab for that user. So again, I'll choose nano for the text editor. And here we have the same file. So for this example, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'll use 55 for the minute, and then I'll use 15 again for the hour. And for the day of the month, I'm recording this on the 28th of December. And for the month, I'll type 12. And today is Monday, so the day of the week will be one. So similar to our previous example, I'm basically just going to echo some text into a test file. But since I'm editing the cron tab for the tux user, if this is successful, then the output should appear in that home directory. But before I save it, there's one important tip I want to give you guys, and that is whenever possible, use fully qualified commands. Now, obviously, the echo command is a valid command, but what we want to get in the habit of is using the full path to the command. In the case of echo, that's going to be slash usr slash bin slash echo. And the reason why we want to use fully qualified commands, which means the entire path to and including the command, is essentially because depending on the shell that's being run in the background, they may not actually be configured with the path to the binary that we're executing. So by using a fully qualified path, we're essentially avoiding that problem from happening. So I'll save the file and exit out. And I set the minute to 55. We can see that it's 53 here. The file is not currently there, so I'm going to give it a moment to run, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the time is now 3.55.
and the file is now there. And there we go, we see the output just like we'd expect. So what I'll do is bring up the command again to edit the cron tab file for user tux. Go back down to the end of the file. I want to show you guys yet another example. So what I'm going to do is add another cron job similar to the first one, but I'm going to set it to simply hourly. Then again, user bin echo. This is another test. I'll use a double greater than symbol because I want it to append to the end of the file. And I'm going to use the same file again. And hourly is a special keyword here that allows us to set up a cron job that'll run every hour, just like you'd expect from the keyword. There's also daily, weekly, and monthly, for example, as well. So let's save the file. I'll close out. And the time is now 3.57, so I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes, and then we'll see if this actually triggered. All right, so let's check the time now. And it should have run. Let's see. And we can see the second line was added at the bottom, just like we'd expect. And this is the cron tab line that was run right here. And we decided to run it hourly, which means again that this is going to take place at four o'clock as well. And like I mentioned, there's other keywords such as daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. And that just allows you to simplify it even more. I think you get the idea. Go ahead and play around with the cron tab. I think it's an awesome thing to learn because you could definitely set up some automation. You can create some scripts that do some awesome things and then you can set those scripts up to run automatically and also redirect the output to a particular file so that you could come back and see the results later. So there you go. You just saw some examples for how to utilize cron to schedule jobs ahead of time, list the current jobs on the system, and all kinds of examples relative to scheduling jobs. I hope that was helpful. As always, we have some great content coming, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.